Good day, grade 11s. In this lesson, we will explore refraction and try to work out how light behaves when it enters a new medium. Let us join Nelly at the pool as she helps us do that. <laughs> the water looks quite inviting, doesn't it? But is there something at the bottom of the pool? The toys look quite big. Let's get them out of the water and have a closer look. Now that the toys are outside of the pool, they look a lot smaller than they did before. On the left of the screen, you notice an image of the toys at the bottom of the pool. On the right is an image of the toys outside the pool. It's easy to see that the toys looked bigger when they were in the water than they do outside the water. This bigger image is not the real thing. We call this a virtual image. Can you think of a reason why the toys looked different when they were in the water? Let's go back to the studio and try and explain what we've just seen. This is quite strange. Let's try to explain it. It must have something to do with how the light is traveling from the toys to our eyes. Let's look at a ray diagram to try and explain what is happening. Here we have the toys at the bottom of the pool. These purple light rays indicate how the light should be moving. We know light travels in straight lines towards our eyes, but the image we see under the water looks bigger and closer to the surface, so something must have happened with the way the light traveled to our eyes. Look at these white lines. They represent how we are actually seeing the toy. If we compare the two sets of lines, it looks like the light seems to have bent at the surface of the water. We are now going to draw in yellow the path that the light must take in order for us to be able to see the toy. We know that this light must travel in a straight line through the water. Now the light must cross a boundary between water and air. Can you see that the light entering the eye has been bent here at the boundary? If we trace this ray back into the water, we see that it is coming from the virtual image of the toy. The result is that we don't see the real toy, but a bigger virtual image of the toy. Let's go back to the pool and see if this happens with anything else. Here we are again. I'm using a pool brush. Wow! Look how different the pole looks when it's inside the water. It almost looks bent. But when I take it out of the water, it's definitely straight. When I put it back, it's bent. No, it's not. Yes, it is. But no, it's not. Let's go back to the studio and explore why the pole appears bent. Well, the easiest way to explain what is happening is to look at another ray diagram. Here, we see the pole in the water. Once again, the purple lines represent the path that the light should take when it leaves the end of the pole. But we know that it doesn't do that because the pole appears bent to us. So the white lines here show how the pole appears to us. In yellow, we are going to trace the path that the light must have taken in order for us to be able to see the pole. Wow, look at that again. It looks like the light has bent, just like in the previous experiment. The light bent because it has crossed a boundary, the boundary between water and air. We call this property of light refraction. So in this lesson, we have seen how light bends as it crosses a boundary from one medium to another. So refraction is what happens when light bends as it crosses a boundary. 
Contrast this with reflection, which is when light bounces off a boundary surface. Next time, we will do a scientific investigation to discover the laws that apply to refraction. You will find more information about geometric optics at www.mindsearch.co.za. learn Remember to try some of the questions in the task video too. Goodbye for now.